<coughs> hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to Into the Core podcast with myself, Linda. Um, it is such a pleasure to have you here. Um, as always, it's another Thursday, another great vibe that is going to be going on here. Um, I've got an amazing guest. Do you know the brand Jua? And if you do, would you like to comment and let us know what you feel about Jua? But before we start the show and I introduce you to the brainchild um, around Jua, let us start the show. Into the core. Get into it. All good things in Africa and beyond. All right, so just letting you know that this conversation is powered by some amazing sponsors, the Rover Panafric Hotel, as well as Paystack, and coming in very hot and heavy and super hot, Jua. Uh, Tomasa, welcome to Into the Core podcast. It is such a privilege to have you here. Um, we met uh, maybe two, three weeks ago um, at your Juawatu, which I just think is such an amazing concept. Um, but um, it, it was a pleasure being there. It was a pleasure um, getting to experience your brand and the different um, lotions, essential oils. So I just um, tell us a little bit about yourself and yeah, and then we can get into, into Jua the product and how you came about it. Yeah, well, look, I just wait. I've got no problem. <laughs> a, a, a standing situation. Yeah, fine, done. So, well, first, thanks, Linda, um, for for having me here and uh, for coming uh, to the to the event. And when we say event, I mean you've you've seen it. It was just um, mostly my tribe showing up, and uh, that's what I that's what I really. Um, like the first Drawatu we promoted on Instagram and we got a really good uh, um, mix of people because it's people that see your Instagram. It could really be anyone, even, even if you can pick your demographic. Uh, what I liked was that a lot of Kenyan youth came and the, the event was exactly to, to just explain what Jua is about. They work without you know, sorry, behind Jua, because you'll, you'll hear during the uh, the podcast, Jua is the tip of the iceberg. So I had people coming in, understanding more about essential oils, where they come from. No one, everyone knows frankincense and myrrh, but no one knows frankincense and myrrh. We, we, we had a nice discussion and a, you know, Q&A with, with, with a lot of people. It was amazing. Now, the second Jua Watu, which is uh, the one that you attended, yeah, I was just doing... Um, words of mouth amongst my peeps uh, so it was just great that you know people came and just pop pop bottles with uh, with me we we, we popped around a dozen bottles of prosecco and um <laughs> no but that is exactly what we, look it was not a drinking competition but it was an no, aperitivo i know so no. the aperitivo <laughs> is a concept that comes from italy which is pre-dinner drinks usually between six and eight and that's exactly yeah. what it was yeah. right so yeah. the fact that we had a lot of people um, meant we need more bottles. So we 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 popped, we popped away, and uh, it, it was just fantastic because we also wanted people to network. And look where we are! Isn't that exactly what Juawato was about? We met 100. that date. You learned about Jua, and now I am here. I know it. It, it is exactly what everybody like. Jua Watu becomes a moment where everybody was exchanging ideas, people were meeting each other. Um, between yourself, Tommaso, and Shiko, um, I got two people on board the core. Um, you know, Same. one as a participating designer, 
and you obviously as an amazing sponsor and not just as a, as a, as a sponsor itself i just feel like your um joy is an element it's a vibe it's um it's something that we definitely all just need so can you explain to us a little bit about the concept of jua and how jua came up and yeah about the brand itself absolutely look i moved to this country in 2014. Uh, i know this sounds like this in this intro is going back <laughs> But it is going back because it's important to understand where I come from. Um, yes. So 2014 is pretty it's, it's pretty fresh, actually. I mean, I could start from before because I always had um, a curiosity about working in this continent, specifically in business um, in rural areas. I believe rural Africa has so much potential and it's, it's, it's so um, informal in many ways. And first as an NGO and then as a private sector, I really tried to be part of the growing uh, system, part of the building structure, part of the uh, social and uh, business um, fabric, right? So I yeah. did that as an NGO. I created alternative livelihoods for an Italian NGO between 2015 and 2018. Um, then I decided, look, uh, this is where I'm going to stay. I mean, I loved uh, the, the first years in Kenya. I was posted in Isiolo and people were like, what, why? What's there? Bandits? Uh, mostly Kenyans have a yeah. distorted understanding of Northeast Kenya. I yeah. found it absolutely beautiful, standing as a rugged, raw sort of uh, beauty and feeling. And I thought, look, um, let me understand and let me see if I can continue the work that I was doing with the NGO, but now as a private sector. And by that, I mean, I realized that most of the uh, challenges in the North uh, rotated around the lack of market linkages, the lack of private sector. Look, there is a uh, volatile security, lack of infrastructures. There's a lot more challenges, but market linkages was actually one of the biggest one that we kept on seeing with the community. So what I did is mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't find a private sector that was working in the project that I was uh, um, coordinating, yeah. giving that exit strat strategy to the livelihood activities that we had in Isiolo County. Yeah. I couldn't find I couldn't I could find trainers I could find I couldn't find a an output for the products that we were creating with the communities that we were collecting whatnot. So. Pretty much in 2018, yeah. I became the private sector that I couldn't find. And that's how Agar Limited was started, which is a creative acronym for African Agency for Arid Resources Limited. It's a long yeah. self-explanatory name. I mean, you, you see in the name what we do. Um, that's why Jua's full name is Jua by Agar. It's important. Yeah that Aga stays in the picture. It's important that Aga, the Aga is part of the name because Jua without Aga would be just a cosmetic uh, line, just a room amenities line, just a line of blends, just a line of essential oils. But Jua by Aga tells you that behind the brand, there is a huge, uh, base of community work, of landscape restoration, of market linkages, of consultancies of value chains, and and all of the things that we do as as a company, which includes creation of uh, seedlings in, in in two nurseries. We are opening up to eight new three species this year. So Jua wow. is the brand, but Agar Limited is the pyramid, the base of the pyramid that created yeah. the ground. Yeah. For, for Jua to sit on top. So we are happy to have now a shop where we can tell our story to more people. Because, because before we could do it just during markets, fairs, but now that we have a village market shop, and I love village market as a mall, it's, 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 it's vibrant, it's, it's always full. Um, village market was one mall that I wanted, and I pushed and pushed and pushed until I got that one. I didn't even have another option. It was only village market for me. I love so that. I'm happy I mean, to join there. And and the fact, okay, so um tell me a little bit about like the people that you're working with, you know, on, on the agar, you know, from your pyramid space, yeah. right? Talk to me about the livelihood, um, how you're sourcing, 
um, yeah. what makes this brand super sustainable. I mean, absolutely, it's very messed up. What we all, we really overuse the word sustainability, but there is the impact that you have created with Agar Limited. Right. Well, um, we were born pretty much as a social enterprise, but in Kenya, every second, third company has a social mission because of uh, the inequalities and because of the development that is still required in the country. So that was not specifically special. What's special is where we do it, which is arid lands, which is Isiolo, Marsabit, Samburu, like Hippia, uh, recently West Pokot. These areas are highly neglected. They are very much out of the spotlight. They are they have a bad rep like when i started working in west pocot everyone was worried about bandits and cattle wrestlers Th that can happen but uh, what i reply to people is do you understand that the most dangerous place in kenya is nairobi okay it's probably mandera but <laughs> after mandera it must be nairobi it must be nairobi so i i really uh, focused on specific counties and areas of this country i calculated once that our area of operation for collection for um farming for uh, 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 operations activities and 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 everything field related is as big as switzerland just to give an idea okay. <clears throat> okay. how massive the north east of this country is so we work specifically with pastoralist communities to 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 get back to your question and pastoralist communities are semi-nomadic usually although they are more and more becoming sedentary they're more and more getting into seasonal crops but yet there is a lot of um nomadic life and pastoralist life uh, still still connected so it's hard um to find a, a livelihood uh, there is not livestock so livestock is 80 to 90 percent of yeah. uh, livelihood for pastoralist communities of course goats sheep um, and and of course uh, cattle so we we understood uh, that we had to diversify this livelihood and that's how we started with gamma arabic that's how we started with frankincense and myrrh and into in 2019 between 2019 and 2020 we understood that alo was a fantastic uh, resource that could grow very well in arid lands. Now, it's not aloe vera. This is what everyone believes. <laughs> aloe vera is, is, I know, look, it's very common. Literally everyone does it, like 99%. Aloe vera is one, one species out of 500 globally. And it's called oh. aloe vera barbadensis. One. Okay. And it's not indigenous to Kenya, it's introduced. Um, it's the most common. That's why it took over the name <laughs> of every yeah. aloe. Aloe vera is the one that you mostly find in cosmetics, in food and drinks, uh, in supplements. Uh, it's, it's that one, but it's not adaptable to where we work. Aloe vera okay. needs more, more water. Aloe vera more needs, uh, absolutely needs, needs more care, needs more, uh fertility in the soil and uh, it's more subjected to pests our aloe which is called secundiflora it's a miracle plant it's resistant to drought it that it grows on rocks and sands it, you can see that aloe everywhere it is believed two-thirds of every aloe in kenya it's aloe secundiflora our species and you can find it in coast you can find it in 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 Kajado, you can find it in nairobi you can find it in marsabit we grow it in Anuki, which is pretty uh, cold and wet. <laughs> it just yeah. is a very adaptable plant. So that's how we work with communities. We train and equip them in a number of livelihood creation, uh, namely gum arabic, uh, frankincense and myrrh. This is collection of gum and raisins, which also yeah. become uh, the essential oils and aloe farming. We out farm and we collect sustainably from the wild, from usually like Ipia or Samburu. And that sustainable collection becomes the base of our cosmetics. So we collect the leaves, we create uh, um, an income for pastoralist communities and then we process it into powder the powder then goes into the uh, the, the the cosmetic line of uh, room amenities what we uh, sell to hotels right and then we yeah. scent it with frankincense and other essential oils from yeah. from within so this is a homegrown line 
of cosmetics and it's an impactful line of cosmetics and it impacts specifically in the north the base of the of the cosmetic is from the north the scent of the cosmetics is from the north it's amazing i, I feel like um jua and um for me i was just we were just thinking about that uh, we were talking about this on the sidebar but it was about jua and it was about sorry i'm going to bring in the gin brand procera where they're just like oh my gosh um this gin brand, you know, made out in the Nanuki area, um, absolutely fantastic, sourced locally. And we're just like, man, so many beautiful things happen in Kenya. Why do we keep looking outside of our country rather than really um, looking in and utilizing? But then again, you know, nobody wants to go to West Bacot. We'll just allow um, <laughs> Tomasa to come in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Sometimes I'm like, look, if you can do what I do, where I do yeah. it, mm -hmm. that, 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 I mean, kudos, uh, you, 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 please, by all, by all means, I have little competition because no one wants to work where, where, where I work. And to be honest, it is pretty, uh, pretty challenging. It is pretty difficult. We, to get back to your point that you just made, Kenya make a lot of quality products, a lot, yeah. but yeah. they are either very small and those ones are all of the artisanal brands that you find at uh, Biz Bass, Pop Up and Chill, and other markets, right? Or in the uh, small pop up stores. Those are small companies, handmade products. That's how we started. In a way, that's how we still are. But luckily, we got we got an outlet, which is hotels, that allowed us to uh, to to scale up, right? Yeah. And we got a grant. And the grant from the British High Commission in 2021 really yeah. helped us uh, scaling up our operations. But that's how we started, small essential oil, no shop. What we need to understand is that Kenya has sometimes either little compliance or over compliance. So there is a lot of business that cannot get through the first compliance system. And, yeah. and then you have the big companies. And a lot of big companies make products that are quality to export. So yeah, we have this yeah. gap. We have this gap where Kenya produces a lot of good quality for the international markets, a lot of good quality, but very small scaled. And in, and in between, we get imported things that could be good, but a lot are not. A lot are not. So we import a lot of rubbish, uh, forgive the term, and we could, yeah. we could do a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, top made in, uh, made in Kenya a quality products, which is what we are really trying to do. And I do want to export as well. Don't get me wrong. I want to earn in euros, pounds, yen, dollars. <laughs> I do. We all do. We all do. But uh, we, yeah. we, we really believed in the Kenyan domestic market and we are happy that we invested in it. Yeah. And I think that that's, I mean, it's a good show. And I, I really like what you've said is that the, that these people who, um, you know, even in the smaller markets, their, their problem is just, getting their compliances to that next level and finding a backing that could take them to that next level. At the same time, I'm, I'm, I want to, I want to give you your flowers and say congratulations because that's a, that's a huge feat. I feel like, um, why I, um, I mentioned this to you. I know I did. Um, I wanted to introduce you to revolutionary coffee was because she decided to make export ready coffee available for a local market, which is what a lot of Kenyan coffee brands don't do. You know, I'm gonna say there's very few who actually um, allow for this, but that's why I was just thinking, um, that's what your other, that's your coffee scrub on the way. Um, correct, correct. We started, by the way, we started, we started with, the, with the prototypes. And, oh, you did? Oh, fantastic. Oh, this is, this so, is so, so I'm looking forward. <laughs> to meet her. I hope she will be at the event uh, next week so that I will be having a chat. Oh, oh, she definitely will. In fact, I'm doing the WhatsApp right now. I'm connecting you guys immediately. I mean, like, and, and then just leave it to you guys. Um, but tell me, so right now, on terms of where um, Jua is, is going to scale up, um, what are the type of like now collaborations you want to do the coffee scrub, but what else would you be working towards? Are you, are you thinking, what what is your year projections because i i think tomasa you're the guy who's like this you're like let's go jump in let's go oh i'm a huge planner i i plan 
one, two years in advance. I think you have to if you have a empire to build. I don't want to build a brand. I want to build an empire. I want to I like build that. a castle. I am incredibly ambitious and I don't, just don't want to have it. I want to create generational wealth. But to be honest, wealth is not what, why I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in this and why I'm... Um, I'm risking my life. I got shot at twice by Morans in, in, the, in the north. I just have a lot of passion for what I do. Yeah, and that's why I've aged so so fast. The, the, north, the north is not for, 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 for everyone. It, it really um, has a lot of challenges. So I'm a European man. I feel yeah. like it is very much my country now. I put roots in Kenya and I will always have a Kenyan base, but I do want to go back more gradually to Europe. One reason is my folks. I want to have my folks come in more. I mean, I'm a I'm an Italian man, and I'm I'm, I'm family right. oriented. So <laughs> that that's yeah. why, right? So, but the thing is, Kenya and Italy are truly now my countries, and I want to have a foot in both. For the last ten years, Kenya was my yeah. was my plan. Kenya was my goal, and I have built something here. Now I want to use. Uh, this bridge between Kenya and Italy to create a distribution channel in Europe. I am looking at other markets, of course, but Europe is where I'm from. If I can impact a specific market, why not impact a market that also belongs to me, which is a European yeah. one? So I also believe European um, buyers are a little more concerned about traceability than maybe other markets. I, yeah. I know that um, uh, buyers have more compliance and more uh, demands in terms of uh, uh, procedures, in terms of uh, traceability, transparency. That's, that's what we stand for. So I believe Europe, um, the old continent, the, 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 the slow continent can still have so much to, to, to say in the international yeah. stage. And I want to create that East African European connection because Kenya is not the only country where I want to, to work. I want to set up a base in Uganda. I, I love Uganda. I lived in Uganda for two years before, before Kenya. Oh, wow. And uh, we can get Croatia, but we can get have amazing bamboo products. There is so much that we can do with sustainable uh, uh, exploitation of natural resources between the two countries. And I have a weak spot for, for Uganda. Yeah. So um, this is where I am going, Linda. I am going to create a big distribution channel for East Africa where we create and we add value here, which is what doesn't happen too often. The The African companies that export, too often they export raw or uh, value-added, like transformed, um, sim simplistically transformed uh, resources. We, we don't do enough value addition in the country or in the continent. Look what, exactly. what's, what's happening. Look what's happening with, with, with Ivory Coast. Finally, they yeah. said, look, you can get all of this raw cocoa and make a million from, from, from you know, on the shoulders of these cocoa farmers. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. ridiculous. So I believe we should follow the same thing. Let's make these products here. We can. We have the capacity. We, we, we need a government that helps us. We need a government that gives us, you know, uh, incentives, not just uh, hit us with, with, with taxes. Hopefully we get, we get that, uh, uh, that support also from, from, from our government. And uh, yeah. Europe is the first, uh, the first base. I want to set up a company in Europe. I want to create a bridge. And I want uh, Jua to be an international recognized brand as, as we also export bulk ingredients, which is yeah. what Agar Limited was created for, was for commodities, raw yeah. bulk commodities. We got into retail when COVID hit. When COVID hit and we lost all of our export leads that we have created with Japan, UK, um, um, Italy. I had already signed a distributorship contract with Italy, but oh, wow. it was, yeah. yeah, but it was, in fact, not the contract, the actual guy that I uh, signed the contract died, the person. So that's, that's what happened with COVID. Yeah. So oh my just, well, Italy was hit very hard by COVID at yes, the beginning of was. 2020. So we lost all of our leads. We had to regroup. 
and that's when we 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 invested in the in the domestic market knowing that uh, covid could 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 keep us all in apnea for the next uh, what whatever years so that's how jua was well in fact that's another thing to say essenza was born in 2019 2020 2021 jua is a pretty new brand it it has uh, it was born out of the ashes of another brand called Essenza, which was our first brand with a completely yeah. different logo. But Essenza didn't have uh, the same traction. Uh, in fact, when I when I changed brand, but sales went up uh, five six times just yeah. because of a different uh, label. That's that tells you how tells how you big yes. visual impact is. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. I mean, like, um, uh, I'm just going to track back to you impacting East Africa and and using our natural resources, I think is super important because as well as, um, you know, because it's a lifestyle brand is how I would look at Jua. Equally is how we are thinking about sustainable fashion and pushing that type of fashion tourism. It would be so great to have people to even come down, you know, the editors that we are trying to bring in, the editors that we want to bring in for our November event. I feel like these are some of the things where I'm just like, it is important for you to tell the right stories, not just to, you know, beautiful, great brand, but to go back and actually see how it is really impacting people so that when you are publicizing it or putting it out there, that you have the narrative, you tell the real story behind a brand or um, why Absolutely. it was sourced, you know? Absolutely. Um, it's from, um, I met this amazing lady um, two days ago, um, Susie was doing her launch equally. Um, and she's impacting, like she's already in 12 counties doing trainings. And I'm talking about like fashion, you know, getting people into training, showing people how to use from fiber to fabric, you know, cotton to fabric, um, and trying to impact their, you know, their communities. Still a lot of hard work, but I really applaud and admire what you guys are doing because it makes it so much easier for me to say, hey, come November, we want to put Jua on the map. How, um, how are we driving down to Pocot? Can we start getting counties involved? How do we get the support? And this comes in where you're looking, um, businesses are looking for government support. Well, they also have to understand the real stories behind brands like Jua and Agar Limited, what you guys are doing and why um, there needs to be a support system because you're helping an economy. You're growing an economy. Right. You're growing communities. Yeah, yeah. So we are. It's super, we are. Yeah. So it's super important for us to do that. Um, I want to give you a couple of um you know, final last words about Jua. And I just, um, even before we get there, I want to tell guys, so Jua is one of my sponsors and I'm just super proud because brands like him just make it um, reason why I'm doing this event. Doing fashion events is not an easy feat, but we're out here and we're pushing for all the right reasons so that we can be more impactful when we do events like this. Um, we want to bring the international um, market space also here. You know, um, my thing is like, if everybody's running to Paris and Italy, I'm like, you need to be running to Africa too, because this is where you draw a lot of inspiration. This is where you draw a lot of materials. So um, it would be great to have a couple of events, you know, internationally grown events here in in in, in Africa, in Kenya. Um, I start with Kenya, home ground first. Those are my dreams, because I'm just like, as I'm building this empire, we better be very impactful and, and, and make bigger moves in, in, and bring in some of that euro and dollar and yen, as you I said. Uh, <laughs> Christ, I, believe, Linda, we have, um, I believe now we have a responsibility to act in, in some sort of capacity towards climate adaptation, towards um, eradication of poverty. And it's just not a... It's not just a sale pitch. It's yeah. a duty that now we have. We lost the the the, the fight against climate change. It's it's lost. So it's right now, that's why we don't we don't talk about climate change anymore. We shouldn't at least. We we need to talk about climate adaptation. We need yes. to adapt ourselves to climate change now. That's what that's what we are doing. We are trying to restore landscape using uh, drought resistant plants and trees because. Yeah. 
the desert, arid lands, together with coast and islands, are the front line of climate adaptation. Those are the areas that are majorly affected by the change in, in climate patterns. So I uh, call myself an impact entrepreneur because what I do needs to have an impact. Socioeconomically, sure, there is a lot of people that are doing that, that are including the, the, the most vulnerable uh, sides of society. That's what we want to do too. But we understood very, very early that if we don't act also towards climate adaptation, we are missing an opportunity to do something. And this, 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 this uh, input needs to arrive from, from, uh, from all of us. And uh, by the way, I don't know if I told you, but I'm from Milan in Italy, fashion yes. capital. Yes. I have, li I was grown like, like a person and a professional within the, 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 the famous Milanese uh, runway shows and catwalks. I breathed that, 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 that sort of air since I was very, very young. And I also have a past in fashion sales. I used to be a sales officer and uh, boutique manager for Italian brands when I was living in Sydney, like Cavalli, Armani. Um, I've actually worked in, in, in fashion for a while before I yeah. got into and ventured into uh, development and all that. So I love and I have been involved in the eco fashion uh, um, week that was uh, going on last, uh, uh, last, last year, I think November. Uh, with yeah. with uh, with the, with the guys of sustainable eco fashion and and uh, and the the um, uh, the Swedish uh, the Swedish cooperation was was involved. I want to involve myself with any event that talks about responsible uh, buying, responsible selling, sustainable uh, diversity, and all that. And yeah. few people understand, and few people know that the fashion industry is the second polluters. Uh, polluter largest in yes the, the, uh, second that that's second. huge that that's is a ma it's massive massive, massive. Yes. so it is. actions are needed specifically yeah. within the fashion industry to reduce this 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 ridiculous amount of waste uh, that, that is not recycled so i love what kenyan uh, and East African designers and, and, and business entrepreneurs are doing because they understand the value of circularity, which is something yeah. that we are integrating as well, and yeah. the recycling, and that's, that's great. But then again, Kenya, in my opinion, I've lived in about six countries, lived, yeah, not traveled, lived. And I can tell you by far, Kenyan entrepreneurship, um, unbeated, Absolutely, um, the, the, the creativity and the, the hustle that Kenyans put into their, their activities, and it's, it's unmatched. There is so much creativity for entrepreneurship right here, yeah. and we need to understand how to help it. That's why I work as a business coach as well, Linda. I also help young entrepreneurs you get in compliance. I, I do. We, we, need, we need to um, – I have a workshop that I'm trying to – gather my head around but then now that i know that you're there i'm like all right mm -hmm. so uh, i'm in that space another... okay yeah. okay not so only definitely... i want to launch an incubator in nanuki at our office where i will be coaching and supporting up to 10 enterprises that only operates north of nanuki because we need to keep focusing on the yeah vulnerable and on the uh, the remote areas because i mean yeah. there are so many there's so many programs in nairobi a few in mombasa but who, who who's looking at at, at uh, the, the the communities in in merile in, in barcelona those those guys are, have really little to work with so we are really yeah. trying to keep impacting so i am a business coach that's something that i do on the side and plus I'm fundraising for an incubator. The incubator will be supporting arid lands enterprises. All right. So my thing is to see how the core and collaborative, how we're pushing on the um, fashion tourism, which collaborators would like to come in and support such an incubation. So we're definitely going to work towards that and see how we can, you know, for us, come and facilitate and help 
you know, in whichever way, either it could be through, you know, spreading the word, connecting. I always just think collaborations, connections. I call myself a facilitator, so that's where I stand, you know. Um, but I do admire everything that you're doing. You're a jack of all trades. I see you, Tommaso. I see you very <laughs> loud and clear. I knew it was going to be fascinating speaking to you, but this was this is mind blowing. And I think you're a game changer. And I like game changers. And I like impactful people. So, um, well done. Well, I'm a, I'm a former um, attention deficit uh, disorder kid. So um, I've been always hyperactive, uh, likely sports. Uh, at the beginning of my teens, uh, swimming and basketball really channeled my, my, my hyperactivity. Um, yeah. And then my, my passion just uh, took over. I believe uh, as an Italian person, passion and, and, and my hot blood, it's, it's, it's part of who I am. I wouldn't change it for the world. I believe passion is the backbone on, of, of everyone's life. You should do something that really impact what you do, because yeah. after a certain age, we really are what we do. And uh, what we do should be really define you. And uh, uh, I am very happy and I'm very lucky to, to be a man of purpose. I have purpose. I, I, I wake up every day. I know what I have to do. So that, that, that's a huge drive. And my son, my son Dante is another huge drive. What I do is also my legacy to him. And wow. these this are big things, no? Yes, it is. Um, huge things. Those are drivers, right? Um, I'm going to give you final last words. Um, I just know that um, when I started into the call podcast, it was about inspiring people. Um, you know, in Africa and beyond, and you're definitely a very inspiring person. And it, it, it's such a selfish podcast. I did this to continue to inspire myself, you know, to have conversations with people who, you know, because, you know, sometimes we lose focus, you know, somebody comes and they want to start talking about somebody else. I'm like, who cares about that person? Talk to me about something that you're doing. Talk to me about what is impacting your life. Talk to me about where you want to go, how you're going to do it. And that's, into the core was just about this. It's about your core. It's about sharing what you're doing. And hopefully somebody will be inspired to say, how do I reach Tommaso? And if you really want to reach him, you just need to follow him on IG, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. for Jua. So why don't you give your handles for everybody to follow you? And let's look for that incubator and let's get people involved. Absolutely. Well, first, come on. You, 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 you're not a, a selfish uh, podcast because otherwise you would not air this podcast, but you would want to just have one on one input from me. And uh, so, no, this is, this is a great platform that you're creating, Linda. And um, you see how we went from just meeting two weeks ago and, and, yeah. and having a glass of Prosecco to talking now in your podcast and in a week time. Uh, being at the event uh, together. So I believe people of purpose tend to meet and build very fast, very fast. And uh, when I worked for the development, uh, you know, actors, uh, I still do, by the way, I, I consult for the Italian government, the UN. I'm, I'm a value chain specialist. So yeah. I believe synergies are massive um, a need that we all need to have. We, even when I enter into a market, I like fir first thing I do is to see how I complement myself with other companies rather than compete. And if I compete, I believe in healthy competition. I am happy to uh, to have a few competitors that uh, that I look up to. I think that's that's very important. Um, and 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 look, your your uh, your work ethic will do the rest. So that's yeah. uh, that's my last bit. But for knowing more about Jua, we are in the process of redoing the the website. So I am gonna give it to you, which is very simple. If you Google Agar Limited, that's it, A G A R Limited, you yeah. will see so many of our platforms: Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter. Although we don't use so much every platform, we are definitely very active on Instagram. Um, we uh, we are quite active on LinkedIn, but definitely I can be, I can be. Uh, uh, what do you say? Um, I can be. Uh, 
uh, contacted. Sorry, the word doesn't uh, didn't come to me. I could be contacted even my through my uh, personal um, Instagram, which is my name, Tommaso Menini. So I am always um, open to hear project and to to that's why we are here with you in the I mean the uh, event, even if you're not directly involved in fashion, because it's about sustainability, right? So yes. we we can be found in. Uh, uh, the village market shop so if you want to know more about uh, Jua we have very trained and capable staff uh, that will be able to take you through what we do just like I did uh, to, 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 to assist you through your purchases we are located at the old wing in village market uh, just beneath Carrefour in front of uh, Chapa Copy and uh, our own stock is there our old stock is there and we are adding more and more uh, items to the catalogs as 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 we were saying we're adding a scrub we're adding a mosquito repellent we are adding uh, more um, more body butters we we have a lot um, um um it's 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 very exciting that's why i i work until late and i wake up early and that's why i have constant uh, um, eye bags um but yes that's 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 my that's my purpose uh, i've picked this life I love it. And I'm I'm wishing you the best. And I can't wait to see you next week, Friday. So anybody wants to join us, we're going to be at the Shamba. Um, we have a beautiful fashion runway show and installation. It's a combination of both to allow you to experience the brands. Um, and we are starting at 6 p.m. We have tickets right now that are going on sale. Uh, Paystack is our financial um, partner. And so if you want to get more information, the Core Fashion Kenya on Instagram, we have our Paystack tag there. And right now for the first 100 people, we've got such an amazing um, giveaway. We've got like um, Marula House in Galu is giving one night free if you book for three nights. We've got Casa Zuri also in Diani that is giving one night free if you book, if you book for four nights. Um, we've got beautiful gift bags from Jua. We've got gift bags from SB Dada, which is Suzy Beauty's new um, um, brand that she just relaunched this past Sunday. We've got 15% um, off of Tarangao in Kilifi. Um, talk to us. We've got you covered. Your 7,000 shillings is so worth it. It's over 200K straight. And Linda, why are my products not in all of these houses and hospitality structures that you just mentioned? Please introduce introduce me to these to these structures. You know, we we put our products in you know hotels, resorts, lodges, all of these beautiful places that you just mentioned. Make an introduction. Uh, we 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 need to sell. We're doing it right now. I promise you, this phone is going to work <laughs> right after this. But this is exactly what the collaborations are about. So I'm going absolutely, to start with but um, I appreciate you and I thank you. Um, and so everyone, thank you so much. And if you're listening, um, you know, after, just make sure you follow us. Agar Limited, look for them. Follow Tommaso Manini. He's on Instagram, um, Facebook. And, yeah, LinkedIn. For, and LinkedIn. And we've got so much more happening. So make sure you come out with for the hatters. Oh my gosh, the hat people. Are you, do you wear hats? Not so much. Uh, uh, my my head is too big for a hat, I think. Oh, but you're still going to love her. Anyway, so South African uh, designer who's a hatter is coming in, so you don't want to miss out. But I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your Very time. much. Very much looking forward, and I'm going to dress up for it. I'm, 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 I'm telling you now. I'm, uh, I'm going to dress up. The, the Milan guy is going to show up. I can just see exactly, it. Exactly. I am transforming into my Milanese identity, not not and the Northern Kenya ones, but believe me. We'll, we'll make it worth your while. We'll make it worth your while. But thank you so much, Tomas, and have a beautiful day ahead. And let me get those contacts going right now. All right, Thanks guys, for having thank me, you so much. Thank you to uh, Paystack. Thank you to Sarova Hotels and um, all my valuable uh, sponsors, Jua, SB Dada, um, Tanga Rao, um, Body by Allison. There's so many, but I really do appreciate you. And thank you for believing in the brand, Bacol Fashion Kenya. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Bye, everyone.